Louisa Mal with you on BBC Radio Wales, and we're in the company now of Professor Nick Craddock. He's from Cardiff University's School of Medicine. Lovely to see you, Nick. Thank you very much for joining us. Nick's here to uh, chat about a documentary that he appears in on uh, BBC Three. It's called uh, To Lisa, My Mum and Me, and it examines the story of a singer, To Lisa, and her personal account of what life is like growing up with a mother suffering from a schizoaffective disorder. Here's a clip. I just remember police turning up, ambulances, my mum literally being restrained and being dragged away. My mum's been mentally ill since before I was born and I've grown up being her carer. I'm not alone. There are 80,000 young people in the UK looking after a parent with a mental illness and I want to find out whether mental illness runs in families. Could this even happen to me? It's clear that like lots of people in the country, you have had depression. It's a message that you need to be particularly careful. Mm -hmm. Is it a possibility? Could I just wake up tomorrow and just lose myself? Strong stuff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, sounds very powerful mm. indeed. Very much so. Uh, Nick, welcome. Professor Nick Craddock, lovely to see you. Um, oh, I, it's hard to know where to start, yes. isn't it, with the experiences of someone like um, Talisa, but I suppose she, she's not alone, is she? A lot of young people would grow up in experiencing exactly what she has. Yes, absolutely. Um, mental illnesses are um, actually very common. Uh, the most severe sorts of illness, such as bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, affect at least uh, 2% of the uh, population, and um, other illnesses affect lots more. So there'll be many, many people will grow up in those sort of situations. And obviously, um, with the lack of understanding and the stigma that's around, that makes things very difficult. 2%, that's, that's an awful lot of people, but yeah. we don't hear about them. Uh, it's it's almost suffering in silence, particularly for a, a young girl like Talisa. She knew that her mum wasn't well. Yes. But it, it's, it is the stigma of still not wanting to talk about it to people outside the family. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I think there's still a tendency to kind of cover things up and just not want to mention it, whereas we know that things like cancer or diabetes or heart disease, uh, people will talk openly about. And I think the sooner that we can move to a situation where people are prepared to... Um, share their um, knowledge and experience, um, uh, you know, that will really transform things uh, for, for everybody. Mm. And what, what about the effects that um, growing up with um, a family member that does experience mental illness, what, what about the effects of that on children? I, I, is that something that's quite particular or does everyone um, really have the same sort of, uh, sort of effects? Well, having a parent with, with any sort of illness, whether it, it's a severe physical illness like cancer or a, a, a mental illness like uh, schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, obviously that uh, has all sorts of um, implications, seeing a parent uh, unwell who perhaps may not be able to discharge the usual parental uh, duties and all mm. this sort of thing. So, uh, I mean, just having an illness in a parent is, is a big issue. There are added issues, obviously, when there's the, the, the sort of stigma and, and mis, m mystical aspects of, of, of mental illness uh, involved. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it can be a, a big thing, yeah. I suppose in many ways this is what Tulisa, in coming forward and talking about her experiences in this BBC Three documentary, I guess that's what she's trying to uh, to, to help others yeah, to no, I mean, break it's down some of these barriers and stigmas. Absolutely. It's fantastic that she's uh, she's doing this. I mean, she's a very... Uh, you know, well-known uh, music artist, particularly you know, popular amongst the the uh, sort of younger people, my, my daughter, for example, <laughs> included. And so, uh, coming forward and, and uh, speaking out highlights both uh, the situation about young carers generally for all illnesses, but in particular, of course, uh, she's been um, finding out about mental illness and bringing that to the attention of uh, the public. And how did you get involved? Um, we, we've got a major programme of research in Cardiff on um, trying to understand the causes and triggers of these serious illnesses, mood disorders and um, il other illnesses like uh, schizophrenia. And um, because of that, uh, Talisa wanted to come and see us to ask particularly about the risks of inheriting illness, because mm -hmm. uh, these illnesses have a tendency to run in families and she wanted to find out about that. And then also to um, ask something about schizoaffective disorder, which is what a mother uh, suffers with. 
And that's actually an, an illness that we particularly uh, study because it's a sort of um, it's a cross between schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. And we do a lot of research relating to, to that. Well, where do you think where we stand at the moment, mm. where does it come from? Is it genetic? Is it something we eat? Is it uh, something that happens to us in our life? Well, what triggers it? You know, that, that, that's, that's, that's a great question, is it? Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, we that's why we're doing research. And um, our, what we know is that the genes that we inherit from our parents can influence how susceptible we are to illness. And if you have a member of the family who's got illness, that will increase the risk that you'll have illness yourself. It doesn't mean you'll definitely get it, but it increases the risk. Mm. But over and above that, that genetic or inherited aspect, there are all sorts of other things relating to stresses. Um, if you use drugs, that increases your risk. If you abuse alcohol, that can increase risk. Um, there can be um, potent triggers like sleep loss can bring on manic episodes, things like this. So it's a very complicated mixture. There's an awful lot we don't understand yet, and that's why we're, you know, obviously doing research to to learn more about it. If anyone wants to to find out about the research, our website is the Bipolar Disorder Research Network, bdrn.org, bdrn.org. Okay. Yeah. And what about um, the ages? What what age might someone be when these kinds of illnesses would present themselves? I mean, is it something that um, we would always live with from being bored, or is it something that actually develops? Again, a fantastic question. At the moment, the way that uh, we, we understand illness, typically uh, the symptoms would come on in the um, early teenage years or young adulthood. <clears throat> I think it's quite likely that as we learn more and more about illness, we may realise that some subtle more subtle signs might you know be there earlier in life and of course if we were able to 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 realize that we could give people much better advice about how to prevent full-blown illness coming on this sort of thing so again that's a very important part of the sort of research that we're doing we're talking to professor nick craddock about uh, the documentary that's on bbc3 tomorrow called to Lisa, my mum and me, coping with a, a mum who had a, a mental disorder. But we'll be talking more about the subject in general after we've heard the next record. We're talking to Professor Nick Craddock. Nick, language is so important. We found it in the realms of racism and in sexuality that words can be pejorative in the way that they're used. Mad yeah. is a word that uh, was bandied around so often in the past. But we're talking about specific illnesses now. You, you, yes. you talk about being bipolar. What, are, yeah. what does it mean? Well, that's a, a you know a good question. But um, obviously, when it comes to people's behaviour and feelings and uh, uh, mood, that it, it's obviously quite difficult to um, to get things across in a simple way. But uh, bipolar disorder is a very well recognized illness where people will have severe swings of mood so sometimes the mood is extremely high overly energetic talking really quickly often a good feeling but often it may be mixed in with bad feelings personal have uh, lots of ideas rushing around spending lots of money and they may get delusions that they're famous person are important they control the world things like this and they often do very reckless things get themselves into problems and and sometimes other people and then on other occasions there's a severe depression where someone's very low perhaps suicidal no interest in life not doing anything perhaps won't get out of bed so this isn't just being unhappy this is deep deep severe depressions very different from normal experience and that's actually a point I should make that, you know, someone being bipolar doesn't mean they're up and down a bit. This is a, you know, a severe disabling illness that really is no different from something like uh, diabetes or cancer or something else it needs to be taken seriously. And, and when it's treated, yeah. um, how can that improve someone's quality of life? Well, fortunately, uh, um, mental illnesses often respond very well to, to treatment and um, that's something that people don't often realise and so for example with bipolar disorder if that's recognised and someone takes sensible uh, lifestyle uh, you know precautions and advice so that they avoid 
doing things like abusing drugs and alcohol and stuff like this, and often they'll need to take medication to stabilise the mood. But a lot of people, when that happens, can then lead completely normal lives, um, not having severe episodes of, of illness. Yeah, um, yeah so, and, yeah. and it's not strange people who have this illness. No. Um, now you've worked with Stephen Fry. You couldn't yes. think of somebody who's more admired, yes. but is quite willing to say that I have a problem. Yes. Um, did you work with him, or how did, how did the, the relationship? Well, seem he, a, a bit like with Salisa. I mean, he, he when he was making his documentary, made two documentaries about bipolar disorder, and he came to see us in Cardiff to uh, find out about our research, and he actually took part in the research on camera. Um, and you know that was obviously fantastic and it, part of the what was shown on that documentary was me asking him in the research interview about his experience of having severe um, ups and downs of mood and um, you know clearly that sort of thing where a figure like Stephen Fry does come forward and, and says about things that have happened mm. in the past is, is important so for example when he was 17 he had a, a manic episode where he was kind of rushing around London spending money on people's credit cards, not sleeping, overactive. And he got picked up by the police and he spent six months in prison. And it wasn't recognised at the time that, that was illness. And of course, subsequently, after that six-month prison spell, he went on and got a first at Cambridge in, in English and became the, the person we know now. And you wouldn't think of him as being a, a, you know, a jailbird or anything. That's an example of how an episode of illness unrecognised caused very substantial problems in his life. And someone who isn't as, uh, you know, as gifted as, as Stephen Fry, you can imagine that they might get into much more trouble with, with illness. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, you were involved uh, also with the EastEnders storyline, with uh, yes. Stacey Slate, the character of mm. Stacey, when she was uh, going through her yes, um, yeah. illness. Yeah. I, I just wonder how you, because as a, as a, as a viewer <clears throat> of EastEnders, I thought it felt like that was done particularly well, and I find yes. it quite moving and uh, yeah. quite enlightening as well about how the sort of illness gripped her. Um, yes. And I just wonder from a, your point mm. of view professionally, were you, were you pleased as well? Yeah, no, very, very pleased. Um, m myself and uh, Ian Jones for, from our department, we were advising on the um, sort of technical aspects of the storyline with yes. regard to psychiatry and bipolar disorder. I think that the EastEnders team paid a lot of attention to getting things right. Obviously, the um, they it's a drama, so there's storyline that yes. they want to tell and the rest of it. But I think that they were very... Uh, responsible in making sure that it was told in a, a fair and balanced way and, and I have to say um, I also found it very moving um, seeing it so even though I'd read the, the scripts and things like this I mean I it was it was done very well I, I suppose that the the, the 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 bit I wasn't so keen on was that <laughs> when there was the big issue about who was the killer Yes. Uh, that turned out to be Stacey, and that, that surprised me as much as it surprised lots of people. I know some people were a bit disheartened, but, um, you know, cl clearly someone with illness, when they're well, may or may not do things uh, just like anybody else. So I think it's, you know, the, the key bit is not for no one to think, ah, just because she's mentally ill, that means that she's the killer. Mm. You know, that's. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, you know, I think that the thing's been dealt with uh, on the whole very well by EastEnders and it's brought the topic to a, a you know, a, a big public. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. been a pleasure meeting yes, you today, sure. Nick. Uh, Professor Nick Craddock, thank you very much to you. Nick's from uh, Cardiff University School of Medicine. Uh, for further inform information, uh, Nick mentioned it earlier, the uh, Bipolar Disorder Research Network, uh, B bdrn.org bdrn.org and the documentary that we were chatting about to lisa my mum and me that's going to be shown on bbc3 tomorrow mm -hmm.